Hey everyone, my name is Zhu Xuan or Zhu Xuan. I use they, them, or she, her pronouns, and I'm a PhD student in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And my name is Kim. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a PhD student in Sweden. We're both part of a new initiative called Julia Gender Inclusive, and we're excited to share this talk on improving gender diversity in the Julia community. So what's the motivation for this talk? Well, for several years now, members of the Julia community have noted that we are not as diverse as we could be. While we strive to welcome people from all backgrounds, statistics show that we still have a long way to go. This is especially so for gender diversity. The 2020 Julia User and Developer Survey found that only 3% of respondents identified as women and did not collect data about non-binary or other genders. Google Analytics data is slightly more promising. About 20% of visitors to julialang.org are estimated to be female by Google. So this is based on proxy measures that only give binary estimates. In either case, we see that women and gender minorities are underrepresented among potential Julia users. We believe this needs to change. Just to give a sense of the wider context, similar programming language communities appear to have considerably more gender diversity. For example, in the 2019 R community survey, 20% of respondents identified themselves as women and 1% as non-binary. In a recent JavaScript community survey, the figures were 6% and 1%. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be similar data for Python, but both Python and R have long established groups for supporting women and gender minorities, PyLadies and RLadies. Of course, all of this is embedded within the broader social environment where gender underrepresentation remains an issue in computer science and programming at large. In the US, for example, only about 25% of computer workers are women, as compared to 40% of life scientists or 60% of social scientists, and that number has only decreased since 1990. We see similar trends in US college major enrollment. CS enrollment increased along with other disciplines from the 1970s, but peaked around 35% in the 1980s, and since then has decreased to less than 20%. The reasons for this are no doubt complex, but coincides with a time in the 1980s when computers and computer games started being marketed towards boys, promoting the stereotype that computers are a masculine domain to the exclusion of women and gender minorities. I'll note here that these trends are actually very culturally specific. In India, for example, 45% of CS University graduates are women, and this number has been increasing for the past 15 or so years. All this goes to show that gender underrepresentation is neither natural nor inevitable. So what might be the causes of such underrepresentation, both in programming as field and in Julia specifically? After all, we need to know the causes in order to address them. Unfortunately, we don't have the research yet to understand what differentiates Julia, say, from R or JavaScript, but we can draw some lessons from research about computer science as a whole. As the brief history I gave earlier illustrates, pre-existing gender stereotypes already impact who decides to enter programming as a field. And founder effects, for example, the gender composition of Julia's founding team, can lead demographic disparities that persist for a long while because of who founding members know and how the community is perceived. Once women and gender minorities do join, a number of factors can then lead them to leave or not participate as heavily. This includes feelings of isolation due to being in a social minority, loss of interest for some due to lack of visible applications or unforgiving technical barriers, lack of confidence because others are seen to speak up more, and lack of role models that allow someone to envision themselves as a contributor or leader in the field. Most of these, of course, can be addressed with sufficient community, inclusive practices, and support. And so now I'll turn it over to Kim to talk about how the Drilla community is already working to address some of these issues and how we hope to further improve things as a group. So after hearing about the statistics, let's talk about our community. There are some things that we do think are working well here. Uh, there are several codes of conduct which have clear diversity and inclusion statements. There is the non-focus code of conduct, there is the Julia community standards, and there is even a specific code of conduct for JuliaCon. And we value this because it cannot be assumed that everybody implicitly agrees on community guidelines. I'd like to highlight this with a sentence from the Julia community standards that means a lot to me personally. And that is, please refrain from making prejudiced or sexual jokes or comments. However, these standards can only help if it is ensured that they are followed. And to that end, we would like to give a shout out to the Julia stewards and thank them especially for moderating discourse. On the other hand, now I'd like you to think about a package that you are maintaining, contributing to, or using, and think of how many of the contributors you know are female or from gender minorities. 
So I checked this for the Julia language repository, and it seems that out of the top 30 contributors, there is only one woman. This is probably representative for many packages in the ecosystem. Let me give you some examples of why that matters. So it is easy to get high quality feedback from the community, which is great. However, of course, you need to ask for getting an answer. And from some of our experience, we sometimes find it quite daunting to post on a public forum, especially when it is male dominated. And then this is not only for technical topics, but also for community conversations. On this course, there are a few discussions about gender diversity. It's great that community members are concerned about this, but the discussions didn't necessarily feel welcoming for some of us. This is partly because they became heated and needed moderation. Um, and they also seem to be dominated by people who were not gender minorities. So while we've been taking steps in the right directions, these examples also illustrate that we still have some way to go. We know that the Julia community is not as diverse as it could be, and therefore a group of us founded Julia Gender Inclusive. We want to promote gender diversity. This means that we are a group for anyone who may see their gender as underrepresented. No matter if you're a woman, if you're non-binary, if you're a trans person of any gender, or if you may be questioning your gender, the point is that there are not so many of us. We want to offer a place where you can find people like you who share your interest in Julia programming. So one way to address gender underrepresentation is through community building and support. We have a Slack channel where we organize our activities, and there are regular coffee meetings where we get to know each other and have both technical and non-technical discussions. We also think it's important to increase the visibility of women and gender minorities in the community. And we might not be so many, but as you see, we're already here. And finally, we offer mutual mentorship and support. If you feel addressed now and you do see yourself as underrepresented, please come to our next coffee meeting and join our Slack workspace. We'd be really happy to meet you. But of course, our goal is not to build up a parallel universe. So we want to make the overall Julia community more diverse. And causes for gender underrepresentation are hard to clearly identify and can usually not be resolved by the underrepresented groups alone. Um, that's why we also organize a BOF session and we would like to hear all of your ideas on improving gender diversity and your experiences with the community. Uh, we hope to have a good discussion about which ways can lead us towards a more diverse future.